Well, good morning and good morning and good morning to you. Hello. We say Zangri's been driving the car. How are you? I hope you're well. Got a bit of sand on the windscreen. Let's just get that sorted out. That's better. Now, I think we're early enough to go the wiggly route. Oh. Something weird's going on. Either someone's moved the steering wheel up and down or my belly's got bigger. Or the seat's in the wrong position. Good. <coughs> well, as you can tell, I still haven't quite shaken my cough, but it's going. So, hot off the press today. Bitcoin's going up for reasons I won't bore you with, except to say over any four year period, it's returned 24% minimum. Not financial advice. I don't charge for financial advice. So you can't sue me. What else? Oh, interest rates expecting to go up to half a percent to 5% because inflation in this country is still not coming down unlike in the United States where it is coming down. So they put a pause on interest rate heights. Oh, one dead badger. <sighs> we're having quite a good time at work. It's a nice time at work. We're having a nice time at work. We, uh, I'm, really, I'm still really enjoying dentistry. I'm really enjoying it. You know, and some of the things that you do, uh, like, for example, yesterday, I had a phone call from a lady who came to see us probably five years ago, once, right? Then she went to see an NHS dentist. She had a lower right E retained, because she had no five. And um, got some decay in the back of it, got a severe toothache from this E. And the uh, NHS dentist... Uh, Put a put a temporary filling in the in the in the hole. I don't think they've done any drilling or anything. Just put a bit of uh, zinc oxide eugenol in the cavity, and then the patient then rang us up yesterday, having been in agony for another day, asking if um, we can you know provide some sort of relief. And uh, when we uh, said that we would see her, and. Uh, and, and then eventually volunteered to take this E out because it was, you know, while, while on the one hand it would have been nice to have saved it, on the other hand it's, you know, you have to be realistic about what you can do with an E in a 40 year old. Um, and, and her amazement that we could not only see her but that we could actually do the extraction if uh, that's what she wanted and it was definitely what she wanted. And then afterwards um, you know, was trying to think what's charger, and when people are in pain, um, then we tend, you know, quite a lot of the time we tend not to charge at all, uh, because we, we see um, relief of pain as one of the big social goods that we provide, and uh, it's not, you know, it's a bit less of a social good if we're charging hundreds of pounds for it. Hello. Speed camera going the other way. Let's wind the window down. I'm about to do a bit of crime prevention. There's nothing coming this way, so what are you going to do? You'll notice I've actually taken the white tissues off the dashboard and turned the blowers off. Oh, I haven't turned the blowers off. There we are. I've turned the blowers off. Oh. 
Bom, 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 bom. Bom, 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 bom. Right, that's enough crime prevention. Yeah, so, uh, so in the end, we, we have two charges for extractions. One is we charge 99 for what I call simple extraction and 199 for a complex, not complicated, a complex. In other words, got complicating factors. So, um, to be honest with you, most of the time, if it's like, I don't know, what I would call a, a normal extraction, in other words, someone who, you know, could have a root treatment or an extraction and opts for an extraction, we would probably charge 199 for all of those. Uh, the 99 is more for people who've got like loose teeth or if we're doing IR dentures and we're doing multiple uh, multiple extractions and then we charge those at 99 each. So <clears throat> I was seriously toying with the idea of charging nothing for this extraction because she was so delighted that you know we helped her so much and to be able to say no that's all right you know we've done our money for the day you can have this on us after five years and the thing is it gives you such a good reputation there's so much good word of mouth if you really get someone out of the clot and then just do it free of charge and that really spreads the good word you know about your surgery um, I mean there is a risk that it will spread the word that your surgery does do stuff for nothing which um, is probably not the word you want to spread but you know in but you get a feel-good factor out of it as well. I just saying, oh no, I'm not bothered about. It. We in general don't charge for a lot of things. I mean, I think we're unusual in we're probably quite unusual in that respect. In the uh, starting right at the very beginning, if you have a checkup, if you have X-rays, then um, <coughs> hello. If you have X-rays, then we don't charge for the X-rays. Uh, and a lot of surgeons will charge for the x-rays. Uh, they'll charge for everything, you know. They'll charge for bite rehabs. They'll charge for... Um, I mean, we charge for dispensing a prescription, but we don't charge for uh, issuing a prescription. Although you could argue that, I suppose, the cost of issuing is could, to a certain extent, built into the dispensing charge. Um, you know, we don't charge if we do a root treatment and all it and it all it's got an access hole, a goosel access hole. We don't charge uh, for the filling that's necessary to seal up the access hole, because at the end of the day, it's it's really easy just to do an occlusal composite in a tooth that it's already numb that you're working on anyway, because you're root treating the tooth. Um, so so there's a ton of stuff we just don't charge for. Again, we don't charge for relief of pain. Um, <coughs> although, you know, but if somebody, um, let's say, some somebody comes in with severe toothache and we start a root filling, then what we might do is we might charge them half of the cost of the root filling. Because then if they don't come back because they're out of pain, then we don't have to do the root filling. But then on the other hand, uh, we don't have nothing for the work that we have done. So that's, our root fillings tend to be sort of half and half. Although, you know, if someone came in and we needed to open up a tooth and put some crestophene and cotton wool in it and stuff, um, we would, I would do that if the, even if the patient said they didn't have any money on them for the root filling at that moment, that they, they intended to come back and get it done later, then, you know, I've been known to do a dresser tooth uh, free of charge. And that's not an inconsiderable amount of work. You know, you've got to get them numb, you use a rubber dam, you're using uh, single-use endodontic instruments, your uh, uh, surgery time's involved, and uh, you know, you, you're doing reaming and filing, which is fiddly, technically difficult work, time-consuming. Um, it's the last thing you want, isn't it, right in the middle of your day, to have to do half a root filling. But, you know, I've been, I've had severe toothache myself. I know what it's like. It's absolutely no fun at all. 
So I've got a lot of sympathy for people with toothache. Especially the people who come in drinking out of water bottles. That's when it gets really, that's when you know they're in real severe pain. I had a guy in yesterday. So, so we took the tooth out. Anyway, I decided to charge 99 just to finish the story. 99, right, because although we'd fitted her in at short notice and she, you know, had kept the staff late and it had impinged upon the sterilization time and everything, um, we were really happy to help her. So I just charged her the cheapest fee for an extraction. And um, even though the E, you know, you know what the roots are like on an E, they're like that, aren't they? So we ended up having to um, divide the tooth and extract the roots individually. Uh, but it, it all went pretty well. And um, and when she left, she said, you know, that's the best £99 I've ever spent. And that's that's good, isn't it? And that makes you feel good. Because, uh, as I say, because I was on the verge, it made me feel good because I was on the verge of charging her nothing. And you undervalue the service and what you're providing, you know. I was thinking, well, what have I done? I've just taken out a baby tooth. Really, that's, you know, got her out of pain. I can't really charge her anything for that. And uh, and yeah, and when we charged her 99, she said, oh, that's brilliant. I'm, I'm so pleased to spend that 99. You know, that's the best 99 pounds I've ever spent. So I suppose I underestimated how much pain she was in. But I don't like to um, think that we, you know, charge money under, duress you know under threat of if you don't uh, pay us then you'll 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 continue to be in agonizing pain I don't mind uh, people ringing me up and saying they are in agonizing pain and then me charging them to get them out of the pain but I don't I do feel very bad and I've never knowingly left anyone in pain just because they don't have any funds and I think that's incumbent upon all dentists you know I think we have to we all have to take that on board. I know a lot of dentists don't, for a fact. Including the NHS dentist that this other, that this patient went to see, you know. <coughs> My other interesting case yesterday was a bloke who came to me, uh, he'd had an upper left sixth taken out, extracted, and was told that he needed a implant in the upper left sixth area. And, um, You know, a, a case, a, an area where you typically have got almost no bone because of the maxillary sinus, and just wanted to know whether he got any other options. And so I told him, yeah, you could have, a, you can have a bridge there, but although the um, teeth weren't really uh, restored either side, the uh, Maryland bridge would do quite well. Although you know there may be a bit of metal visible plately if he laid on his back or hung upside down by his feet or something, but um, uh, so so. But the, tr the trouble is this London implantologist wanted to do an implant and so an implant had been the option he'd been given. So he was quite pleased to have another couple of options. But um, the most interesting thing about him actually, funnily enough, was on the other side. Where on the upper right, he got a, uh, the, the contralateral tooth, the upper right six, was root filled. And the, uh, although the, the mesial buccal root was a bit underfilled, a bit short, and he was complaining of pain on the on the upper right. So we had a look, uh, try and find out what the problem was. Did a load of tapping and testing and x-rays, couldn't see anything. The, the fiber's got a very, very large DO composite in it. Totally non-standard uh, cavity prep. More, more like a semicircle than a, a box. Uh, and very close to the nerve again. And uh, the six is root filled and so but we didn't so we didn't think that that was likely to be a cause and the seven uh, has got an occlusal composite in it which on the face of it looked like you know again quite a nice job anyway we packed him off with antibiotics for a couple of weeks because the thinking is that as these people i know these people want an instant solution and they want the problem diagnosed and they want the treatment done on the day they come in with the toothache if they're very um, nebulous and vague about which tooth it is, you know, you, and you say to them, can you put your finger on the tooth that's giving you the trouble? If they spend more than, if they do this, then you know they've got the right tooth. If they do this, then you know they haven't got a clue what tooth it is. And you need to know what tooth it is, because the dangers of um, 
extracting or root treating or filling the wrong tooth are very real when you can't narrow down the problem. So anyway, we did, um, uh, as usual, all the electronic pulp testing and everything. The, the uh, seven came out as vital, although a little bit more sensitive than the rest of his teeth. The um, six was obviously non-vital. Um, the five and the eight were higher readings, like 30s instead of sixes or sevens. Um, and so I come to the conclusion that the only way to take this any further will be to take this occlusal out on the seven and have a look underneath. Now, this is where experience comes in because this guy's Eastern European, right? Now, <coughs> it's possible that he had all these fillings done in London. In which case, you know, my theory doesn't hold water. However, it's also possible that he had them all done in London by an Eastern European dentist. So, and the one thing that I've noticed about Eastern European dentistry is it involves an inordinate number of root fillings. It's not at all unusual to see someone come from Eastern Europe in their 20s with six or 10 root fillings in their teeth. And this is very uh, atypical, you know, uh, certainly for this country and the type of dentistry we do in this country. And <clears throat> I'm really uh, searching for a reason as to why this is. And the reason I'm honing in on is that they are just... I don't know whether they do their dentistry in the dark. I mean, I've been to Romania and I've been to a dental school in Romania that didn't have a single light turned on. I'm serious, the only lights were the, um, the dental lights. There were no lights in the department, no lights in the corridors or the offices, during the day anyway. So I don't know whether they're doing the dentistry with the eyes shut or something, but the, the cavity preparation, the shapes of the cavities, and the depths in particular of the cavities are uh, uh, unusual, let's put it that way. They are, uh, for example, so an occlusal, for example, they'll do an occlusal, um, they'll do an occlusal, and it will be like, the bottom of the cavity will be completely flat, completely flat. As though someone has just stuck a cylinder burr in and just hollowed out a cylinder and then put a, line, put, put a filling in. Very few linings uh, and a lot of composite. And so I think this is what's killing all the nerves off. So, anyway, long story short, we took this occlusal composite out and there are some tracings of some sort of white substance and a big fat, in my opinion, traumatic exposure of the mesia, of the, the, the distal buccal cusp. <coughs> so, this is obviously what's causing the trouble. The only other possibility is that it's this one and the five that's causing the trouble. I wouldn't be at all surprised if we don't find a, a carious or traumatic exposure of the, the distal, the DO on the five as well. But um, what I've done is I, uh, you know, I had to open the tooth, clean it out, dress it, crestfeed, cotton wool, cavity, etc. Um, I told him that. Um, what the problem was, I think that the previous dentist had um, pranged the nerve and tried to cover it up, both physically and, <laughs> and most metaphorically, by by possibly trying to put a bit of lining over the um, over the exposure, which is the uh, white stuff that we sort of see. And um, uh, we're going to bring him today or tomorrow, and just to check that the pain's gone away, because I think. Uh, you know, you need positive feedback on these things. When you've got a case like this, it's a mystery case. He's been in once, two weeks ago, had antibiotics, couldn't tell him what the problem was then. You know, was it perhaps a cracked tooth? Sometimes you get a cracked tooth that's symptomatic and then like six months later, the patient comes in and says, oh, big lump fell off that tooth. And you're like, well, yeah, okay, that must have been what's given you all the trouble. You must have had a crack in it. And the cracks finally worked its way through the tooth and the bit's fallen off. And so now we know what all the pain was, you know, on biting. Um, 
but um, I mean I'm not pleased we found an exposure but I'm pleased that we were not pressured by him you know because he's one of these guys and uh, again Eastern Europeans very forthright very uh, uh, <clears throat> much less uh, concerned about uh, uh, what's the word manners uh, as we understand them in the West uh, you know just kept sitting there saying well this is terrible I've been in pain now for two weeks uh, you know which you know you, you can't help but read that as a sort of a you know you're a useless dentist I've been this is my second visit to you two weeks I've been in pain you still can't tell me what the problem is you know etc etc so, um, so I had to explain to him more than once that you know I could I could eliminate the pain by process of elimination by just taking out all the teeth on the top right but that's not the way to deal with it you know we have to try and be scientific and meticulous and methodical about finding out what is the most likely cause you don't even have to find the cause you just have to at any one point say what you think is the most likely cause you know is it a fracture is it uh, a non-vital tooth is it um, over brushing uh, sorry I got distracted there for a minute um, and then and then you know because you're not really going to get into too much trouble for doing nothing if you don't know what to do and I mean and even I as an experienced practitioner who's been doing dentistry since the late 70s which is like nearly 50 years now there are times when I don't know what to do I honestly you know, I mean, uh, sometimes, and certainly with this bloke, I felt like saying every time he said, oh, two weeks, two flick for two weeks now, I felt like saying to him, right, okay, well, look, I, I, I can't, there must be something going on. I can't see it. Another dentist might be able to see it. Therefore, I recommend you go and see another dentist, uh, you know, who may be able to achieve uh, what I can't achieve. But I'm hopefully we'll bring him up today and he'll have a smile on his face and then we'll Everyone will be happy, he'll be happy, we'll be happy. Uh, you know, and just don't beat yourself up too much. You know, you can't, you, you're giving him all the benefit of your skill and experience. Uh, you know, they can't complain too. It doesn't stop them complaining, but I mean, really, they've got no right to complain that much. I had a, another woman who um, had a bridge, upper left one, two, three. The three was obviously non vital. And um, so we put a hole in the back of the bridge, tried to find the root canal. Now, you would not think that you could fail to find a root canal on a three, would you? On an upper three. Root like a banana. Hole, hole to match. But could I find it? No. Anyway, she's the same as... Um, Hello. She's she's the same, you know, like with the added with the added problem that she used to be a dental nurse, and so she's like, oh, I used to work for Mr. Smith. Mr. Smith never had any trouble finding root canals, and I'm like, no, I don't. Normally, I don't have any trouble finding root canals. Normally, I can just stick a drill in a tooth, drop a drill down, wiggle it about a bit, and then throw a, a reamer in like a dart and get straight in the canal but not this canine for some reason couldn't work it out anyway send her off to an endodontist because two reasons one she's an ex-dental nurse and b she's a whingy old bag and um the um endodontist to his credit worked out that the um tooth had snapped at gum level and the the bridge had rotated slightly and that's why I couldn't find the canal. JJI3096, yeah. There's a man in a hurry. I think this is all gonna change any with this interchange. I think they're gonna get rid of this. Junction. Or well, this lane anyway, I hope this lane goes. I'll tell you, I'm fed up with this lane. Just annoys everybody. Everybody queue jumping using this lane. 
Yeah, so anyway, he's, um, he just said I can't root treat it and sent it back to me, which is brilliant. From my point of view, that is absolutely brilliant because all her whinging about the fact that I can't find the canal and now I've sent her to a specialist endodontist who's probably charged her 75 quid for a checkup and also confirmed that he can't find the canal either. So there's some satisfaction in that, isn't there? Yeah, wiggle on because these traffic lights are they let a lot of cars through but there's a lot of cars wanting to come through this is the stranglehold on ramsgate this particular set of lights anyway i told her that the only way we're going to fix this is to um, remove the bridge because even if i could now knowing what i know now find the canal where the there you go where the um endodontist failed um we still can't, well, you could bodge it up, couldn't you? Theoretically try and reattach the bridge to the tooth, but um, anyway, she's got the dosh. So we're just gonna, and she wants it done properly anyway. I don't think she's not the sort of person that would would say, yeah, bodge it up. And you know, if you can do it for under quid, bodge it up. She's not that sort of person. She's like, no, if the bridge is broken, then we'll have a new bridge, you know? Anyway, or we could, you know, I could section it between the two and the three and just do a post crown on the three and she can keep the two thirds of the bridge, couldn't she? Uh, if we weren't worried about the barn door uh, effect. That was a bit technical, wasn't it? That was a technical talk for the dentist among you there. Anybody who's expecting Bitcoin news or macroeconomic commentary, I'm afraid you'll be disappointed yeah so I'll perhaps um, talk a bit more about our lab <clears throat> because it's pretty well finished now we might um, just give you a guided tour of it uh, so you can see if you want to set up one of you know your own lab what's involved really anyway nice to talk to you I'll see you soon. Bye.